By the end of this video, I really hope you might have learned something new about Hypermill. I'm here with Justin from OpenMind to talk about something that could save you and your machine. So, Justin, nobody really likes to have a crash, but when you're doing parts day in, day out, it is inevitable. So, how can Hypermill really lower the chances of it happening? Sure. So as long as you have the tool, the tool extension, whatever the tool build comprises of, the CAD model of the, of the tool holder, modeled into Hypermill, you will not gouge your part. What we also do in the tool build, if you're doing, say, um, multi-axis work, and you might want, for example, the, the spindle body as well, we can put that in as part of the tool build. So it's all going to collision and avoid when it calculates the tool path. And I like what you said there, it's not just the tool or the tool, tool holder, it's actually the spindle as well. Yes. Now, today we're here at Alcom Precision and we have one of the parts they've made here, which just to start off is an absolutely amazing looking part, but there's also some really risky pockets on this that I'd like to go through. So, can we just talk about some of the parts on this that collision avoidance would really help? Yes, it's the first time I've seen this, this, this part today as well. Um, and and I, I instantly honed in on, um, in, in, in there, I'm not sure if it comes out in camera, there's an undercut at an angle. That, that's not a nice position because of the neighboring surfaces around it. So again, so long as the tool build is correct with the tool holder, you just don't need to worry about it. We're just going to index to a position, feed the tool in, and the toolpath, we call it collision avoidance, the toolpath itself will avoid the collision. And it will tell you if it's had to make changes to, to make an, uh, the avoidance. So I like what you said there, that Hypermill is actually clever enough to change your toolpath to get you the pocket or whatever the feature is it needs to, but it can change your program in a way to, to avoid crashing your machine. Yes, if it can. If it's a simultaneous cycle, it will say it might have had to adjust the B or the C angle, and it will just carry on, but it's telling you all the time it's had to make adjustments. Now, there's other things on this part that we'd, I'd like to go through as well, because as well as having it on one side, you've also got it on the other side as well of the same part, which to me looks just as awkward, trying to get right up in there. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, exactly. Um, there's no easy way to, you probably have to rotate the model a few times <laughs> to think how you're going to get in there. But again, you let, you let Hypermill do it for you. you. You just pick the surfaces. It's all about, they're the surfaces I want to machine. This is the tool I want to use. Do it. So I like <laughs> that. There's no, there's no worries on your part. And then there's no, essentially you're taking the human error out of the equation because you're just telling Hypermill I want to machine this. With this tool, machine it for me. Yeah, but sometimes the challenge is that you can't get that to cut the way you'd like it to cut. You might just want it to move up and down, but you can't get it to do that. So we have a five axis rework cycle, and the rework means what you could do is put a three axis one on there, forget the collision, just put a three axis toolpath that, 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 that has the flow and the pattern that you want, now rework it, and it will make it five axis with the avoidance. So even. So if there isn't a cycle that does what you want, you can kind of make one. So, I like, I like that. So you're not, you're not essentially stuck just using the predetermined cycles. You can use cycles that aren't really specific for that operation to do other things. Exactly, exactly that. So yeah. that, that must make it quite user-friendly then. Absolutely, yeah. Well, we, 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 yeah. We, we, we joke and we call it the get out of jail cycle because it gives you other options. Now, we spoke about the collision avoidance. But then there's also something else on this part I think we should go through because that is such a beautiful finish. There's mm. absolutely no, there's no joining marks, there's no nothing. So how do you achieve, how do you achieve such a nice finish? So it's quite common when you see surfaces with a, probably a large radius on them and they're flowing. It's, it's quite common to see faceting, I suppose, is a term that people use and you can almost Certainly uh, when you've got reflective light, you can almost see flats. There's not much to feel, but you can visually see it. So we've got a uh, high precision surface mode, which uh, recalculates against the surface and it basically eliminates that. So, so it's a different calculation and point distribution method. 
So just all these little things just make must make it so, and I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, but it must just make it so user-friendly that you're not having to pick all boundaries or you're not, you're not trying to machine things that you, are, you yourself don't think you can actually machine because Hype Mill will just do it all for you. Yeah, you're not limited to three or four toolpaths. There's, there's, there's numerous ways to do something. You know, you give, give this to our engineers, they'll all program it, something, they'll do something different with it. And I think that's brilliant, that even if you gave one part to four or five different users of Hype Mill, no two will probably program it the same Pro way. Probably not, no. So, well, Justin, thank you very much for your insight on this part. And if you have learned something from this video, or you would like more educational videos on different topics, then leave a like and leave a comment below, but also don't forget to hit that subscribe button.